Good afternoon. Um, I'm Takato Shito, director of the uh, program on public pension and sovereign funds at the Center on Japanese Economy Business uh, at Columbia University. And I'm also a professor at the uh, School of International and Public Affairs. On behalf of the center, <clears throat> I'm very much delighted to introduce uh, His Excellency Taro Aso as our second key keynote speaker today. Mr. Aso currently serves as uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, and Minister of State for Financial Services in Japan. I want to extend a warm welcome to him and express our great um, uh, gratitude for taking time to join us today. It truly is an honor to have him here with us. Although he needs no introduction, let me take a few minutes to describe Minister Aso's impressive career. Before branching out to uh, politics, Mr. Aso served as CEO of Aso Cement Company Limited. In 1979, he was elected to the House of Representatives for the first time, but he has been re-elected 13 times since. He represents the Kyushu Fukuoka 8th District, uh, his hometown. In the past, he served as Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister for Internal Affairs and Communications, and in the De Liberal Democratic Party, to which he belongs, he served as Secretary General and Chairperson, Policy Research Council. And um, as a man with many talents, he represented Japan as, at the Montreal Olympic Games uh, for clay target shooting in 1976. And I'm sure he's now practicing uh, secretly to become an <laughs> Olympian next year in Tokyo Olympic Games. Additionally, Mi Minister Aso has been instrumental in organizing the G20 Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors meeting in Fukuoka this year. And G20 summit in Osaka, uh, of which he has um, uh, to be held in, in, in June. Japan proposed the topics that will be discussed, among, um, uh, among others, the global imbalances and demographic challenges in these meetings. Minister Aso came to uh, Columbia University in uh, April 2017 to give a talk on the Japanese economy to our students, and he was very popular. And uh, students are very much uh, uh, satisfied with the event. And um, uh, that, that was really, um, uh, truly uh, uh, great for our students, and we are very much appreciative to, uh, to you, Mr. Aso. I'm excited to hear what uh, he has to say, and I'm sure all of, um, all of us uh, 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 will enjoy the talk. Okay, so uh, without uh, uh, further ado, uh, we welcome you, Mr. Aso. Thank you so much, Ito uh, Sensei. Uh, as he was saying, the year before the last, I. Uh, somehow uh, had to make a kind of lecture or a kind of speech at uh, Columbia University by mistake. And, <laughs> and uh, well, I, don't, I don't remember what, 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 I, what I said, but Ito-sensei said it was very welcomed by the young, stu young student. And we, Columbia University, is going to have a kind of this lecture in, in, uh, kind of mission session in, in Japan. So uh, make some speech at this uh, conference. Audience is not a young student, but fairly old student. Rather his student, but so I came here finally anyway, reluctantly I came here. <laughs> well, anyway, anyway uh, let, let, me, let me speak what we are thinking. Well, most of the foreigners are from, from America, so I think in America right now, he, he I mean, if Donald Trump just left Japan this, uh, this afternoon, but in America right now, it seems that you are busy 
kind of uh, soul searching, looking into who you are. That is uh, quite all right, but let me begin by saying, saying something. Pessimist America is not the kind of America the rest of the world wishes for. Bear in mind a self-confidence, even exceedingly self-confidence American, America is what the rest of us across the world cherish. Because in this world of deepening chaos, we still need America leadership. And that's what you should always bear in mind. Sometimes I see visitors coming from the United States who sound highly pessimistic about the current state of US policies, or US, let's say, politics. Do I buy this argument? No. And let me tell you why. The moment I closed my eyes, uh, what I saw on the moment, um, momentous day comes back to me. It was on November the 22nd, the 1963. I was in a student lounge at the Stanford University. We are all stand, watching the TV news reports that President Kennedy had been killed, assassinated. Over the next several years, I had been London as a student, Sao Paulo, Brazil as a businessman, and uh, Sierra Leone in Africa as a business again, paying attention at all times to what was going on in the United States. Martin Luther King Jr was also killed in 1968. So was the same year the Bobby Kennedy, Robert Kennedy was also being assassinated. And in the summer of the 1971, all of a sudden, President Nixon closed the gold window. I would say that the United States is a been there, done that country, nation, that is why I'm long on America. Shinzo Abe is long on America, too, I think. For me, America is about the key, uh, about the sky. The sky, uh, blue sky, I looked up to from the campus of the Stanford University. And in America, the sky is still the only limit. Do make America strong again. Make your leadership strong as well. Because a strong America is in the best interest of Japan, just as a strong Japan is the best interest of America. The US and Japan can work out to get out uh, challenges, common challenges down the road. Between us, trade talks are going on, and we can solve whatever difficulty that lie ahead. After all, America and Japan have, have, uh, have together uh, overcome the lots of uh, trade difficulties, uh, trade friction, and so on. Now, such as Japanese car makers produced 3 million and 70,000 cars in the United States. 3 million, not a 30 million, 3 million. Which is twice as many as their export to the US. So far, Japanese firms have invested $469 billion in the United States of America. They employed over 
160,000 people in the United States. That is not the end. In this batch, a few months ago, Toyota announced that they are going to invest $13 billion in the United States within the next three years. More such Japanese companies will follow suit, creating the even more jobs. I'm confident that the U.S.-Japan economic partnership has only one direction to go. That is North. Let us look beyond our short-term concern, such as trade negotiation, which journalists like to talk about this issue. But take, for example, for GDP, gross domestic product, is it still a good enough tool to measure our economy? What about the future of our sovereign currencies? Or what should we make of the interplay between the investment and saving? Also, we now have the cryptocurrency or crypto assets. What should be done for us to better deal with crypto? And the list goes on and on and on. To tackle those challenges, we need a few playback to rely on, and who else could make it happen? It is us, Japan and the US, who should face up to those emerging challenges and the set standard for our future economy as the most like-minded partners. And it must be you, you at the CJEB, who leads the debate, and this is where applause is due. Let me repeat. The United States and Japan must work not only on the short-term issue, but also, more importantly, on much longer tasks that are the everyone concerned. Next, I'm going to walk you through some of the important changes now taking a place in Japan. Professor Patrick, as I recall, you book your book on Japan's main bank system came out in 19. 95, I think. Already nearly 20, uh, three, four years ago, isn't it? This is amazing. Much has changed since then, especially, especially <coughs> about the corporate governance. There was a time when the main bank gave governance to corporate Japan. The main bank of the main banks was the IBJ. Do you remember that? What is the abbreviation of IBJ? Huh? The Industrial Bank of Japan, it, it was called, which is no longer there, <laughs> as it is now the part of the Mizuho Bank. If you say IBJ today, the in initial now point you to uh, online dating service company. <laughs> it's true. I remember the IBJ corporate mascot was Cupid. And the founders of the dating service company are ex-IBJ bankers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a true story, you know. <laughs> now I, the IBJ is gone, and also gone is the governance of the main bank system provided to Japanese companies. Indeed, it is no <coughs> longer possible for Japanese banks to give a good enough, <coughs> good enough governance because of something unique has happened. In Japan, it is a corporate sector, not the household. That is the primary saver. 
As of the end of the 2018, the Japanese corporate sector possessed 262 trillion yen in cash of reserve. That was about 2.4 trillion, uh, trillion US dollars. There is literally motivation on the part of the commercial banks to urge the corporate sector to reduce that cash. In these circumstances, banks cannot give the good governance to the corporate sectors. At the same time, we cannot statutory corporation income tax rate while expanding its tax base and made it a law at the internationally competitive level. We did it together with the improving the corporate governance and encouraged the companies to increase the investment which return to the shareholders. This is how we came to urge the Japanese corporate sector to build a good governance and to raise the return on equity. To that end, we introduced the corporate governance code in 2015, which was a symbolic of the Japanese economy having a change in a fundamental structure. Dr. Patrick, what would you say? I'm keen to hear your thought, let's say. This last January, a company in Japan, run by an ex-Goldman banker who is female, lady, professor, doctor in astronomy, astronomy, hmm, put a small satellite into orbit, satellite into orbit. When the time comes, the satellites will let out a dozen of small particles into space. When they fall and enter the atmosphere, they will make star showers. Imagine that at the time of your choosing, your, you could see the dozen and dozen of shooting stars shining in red, blue, or violet, or whatever it is, and so on. The company called Ale, H-L-A, is the first ever maker of human-made shooting star. That is a dream innovation, and Japan badly needs more such attempt. And entrepreneurs such as Mr. Rina uh, Okajima, Okajima-san, the founder of Ale. Nothing is more important than encouraging the younger entrepreneurs who are willing to take a risk to scale the new heights. And the question is how? Here I must remind you the great <coughs> gross total amount of welfare spending in Japan now approximately 1.1 trillion US dollars, I think. That is the US defense budget, the China's defense budget, Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia, and France all combined, all put together. At present, some 60% of welfare spending is covered by taxpayers' money, and that rate is on the rise. In these circumstances, how can we give hope and encouragement to people like Rina Okajima and generation to come? One of our answers is to spend more for families with children and their generations. Come autumn, this come autumn, we will be raising our VAT rate. VAT means value added tax. We call it shohize. And the revenue generated will be spent precisely in reduce the financial burden for family with children. Preschool education will be made free of charge. College tuition will follow suit for less well-to-do families. 
We are effectively rewarding our social contract. That is what we are doing, and I urge you all to remain cautious as to how far we can go. So, ladies and gentlemen, the corporate governance has gotten better, and Japan is, um, let's say, courageously facing up to the challenges of how best to rewrite our social contract. Speaking of change, there must be a joint effort between Japan and the United States to look into our changing economic landscapes and build new ways to capture our changed economic realities. More and more people will live over the age of 100. 100, huh? The household sector will be spending more and saving less. Corporation that normally invest more and save less in doing the opposite, are doing the opposite. In other words, the current account balance is a reflection of the state of economy, especially the saving investment balances. Global imbalances imply the underlying the domestic imbalances. This means they are to impose the tariffs of the single trading partner solves no such imbalance. It only invites the import from different sources, different sources. Also, when there is a saving gut, as we have seen in the number of Asian emerging economies, we should build the infrastructure, quality infrastructure, not cheapest type. Capital sees no borders, and yet every sovereign power in its own way seeks the financial regulations, causing great financial fragmentation to the merit of few. On this point, we are aiming at building, uh, using the G20 as a springboard a such closer uh, consultation mechanism among the financial regulations. Again, it is crucial that we, that the um, greatest allies of America and Japan work together to seek the solution wherever the possible for those global problems. <coughs> I said before that Japan welfare provision total 120 trillion yen is about 1.1 trillion US dollars. If left unchecked, it will surely grow bigger to 140 trillion, uh, I mean uh, 1.3 trillion US, US dollars around 2025 and 1.7 trillion US dollars in 2040. Still, that is not entirely a bad news, because the flip side of the coin is that Japan is constantly creating a demand as big as the total amount the five biggest defense spenders are spending. In other words, Japan's power of generating the demand is simply awesome. One final note before I end my remarks. A survey shows that Japanese men between the age of 75 and 79, like me, <laughs> 79, walk at 2.89 miles per hour. Hour. Hmm? Of the same age group at two point, uh, same age group at two point seven three with women. Those walking speeds surveyed in two o o six were equivalent to how fast 
65 to 69 years old, used to walk back in 1997. Ten years different. Japan's elderly people have effectively shaved ten years off. How they carry themselves, which is a magnificent development. That is why I say to myself, I found it like a walk in the park to play a golf with Donald Trump and Shinzo Abe back in late April. And that is why I also say to myself that I still enjoyed what I had, what I do after all these 40 years in politics. Thank you, thank you so much.